So by that, we jump over to the third presentation uh, that is being done by Kai Yang Lin. He has a master uh, from 2014 and a bachelor from 2012 from School of Information Science and Technology, Central South University, Shangsa, China. Today he is a visiting PhD candidate at University of Victoria, Canada, and he is doing research in cloud computing networks and Internet of Things. So in a couple of moments, Matthew will load his updated slides into the presentation computer. <clears throat> I just wonder if I have some issues out of the format, maybe change during the presentation. Do you want to prefer a PDF? Yeah, I prefer. The title of the third best uh, paper candidate is Learning Based Adaptive Data Placement for Low Latency in Data Center Networks. So, voila. Good. Please go ahead. Thanks for the well, well introduction. Good morning, everyone. Today I'll be talking about a new learning based data placement scheme to achieve low latency in data center networks. This is a collaboration among many of us at the University of Victoria, Central South University, and Changsha University of Science and Technology. Let's begin by introducing the motivation of this work. Currently, we have witnessed the explosive growth of data-intensive applications driven by web search, social networks, and e-commerce. In the storage system, data items are not always stored at the location where computation happens. In the process of data analytics, data items need to be moved frequently between the storage nodes and the computing nodes. This inevitably causes the increased and changing data access latency. In order to reduce the latency, the data placement problem arises and need to be well solved. The key point of data placement is the storage locations of data items. It has been reported that the storage locations of data items affect the finishing time of the distributed computation tasks. The main bottleneck is the data movement latency. Major cloud providers such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft have reported that a slight increase in the overall latency may lead to the observable fewer user accesses and a significant potential revenue loss. Different factors contribute to the latency, such as the processing, queuing, transmission, and propagation latency. Existing research efforts focus on analyzing different factors that may affect the network latency with the handicraft design of optimization models. The limitations to these solutions are obvious. They are not flexible enough to deal with network uncertainties, such as unreliable network links, viable user request patterns, and evolving system configurations. Different latency factors could be time variant. Some of them are even with different proportions in various application scenarios. To sum up, the data placement problem can be defined as follows. How to choose the storage locations of data items for low latency, facing the challenges of adaptability and easy implementation. This means the proposed scheme should be an online algorithm to deal with network uncertainties and could be adopted by a realistic storage system without modifying the existing storage architectures. Let's show the design overview of the proposed scheme, DataBot, which is basically a Q-learning-based solution. Q-learning is a classic model-free reinforcement learning technique. The purpose of Q-learning is to learn a policy. This policy tells an agent what action to take and what circumstances. For the data placement problem, the dynamic information of the environment can be learned with a series of data flows to understand which data item should be placed on which server such that the corresponding read-write latencies can be reduced. As the data item and user request patterns may change quickly, the measured read-write latency are used as a reward to train the recurrent model. 
In this way, DataBot continuously learns better data placement decisions over time in the long term. YQ learning can be used to solve the data placement problem. Data placement can be treated as a finite Markov decision process for the following two, three reasons. First of all, the number of storage servers is finite. Secondly, each action of data placement is independent. The performance of placement only depends on the current states and decisions. It has been proved that the model free Q learning can find the optimum action selection policy for any given finite Markov decision process. So Q learning is used as the basis of our design. However, the conventional Q learning has the following two limitations. First of all, due to the numerous data items and many deployed servers, it may suffer the curse of dimensionality and slow convergence with the increasing scale of state action space. Our solution to this limitation is a proper Q function design and approximation with the neural network. Secondly, the traditional workflow of reinforcement learning requires updating the model after each decision. This recurrent training process will introduce extra delays to the data request, which is undesirable for data center applications. This issue can be addressed efficiently by our asynchronous implementation. Let's talk about the key feature of our design. The decisions are only made on the basis of end-to-end -end measurements of data flows, which is easier to achieve. Three categories of state information are included. The first category is about the network conditions, that is the average read-write latency on each pair of servers in the network. Let L denote the measured latency for each data movement. The well-known exponentially weighted moving average mechanism is used to estimate the network conditions, which only requires a constant space to maintain the prediction. The second category is about the user request patterns. It includes the read-write rates to a data item from a source server, and the total read-write rates of all data items from that server. The discounting rate estimate method is applied here. We maintain a counter for each item in the request patterns. It increases with every read-write operation on each pair of servers in the network, and decreases periodically with the ratio factor. DRE has several benefits. It reacts quickly to the changes of user request patterns, and also only needs a constant space to maintain the prediction. The third category is a zero-one vector, which represents whether the server is a source location of the right operation or not. This category is necessary because the, right of the source location of the right operation would make a difference to the latencies. In our design, given the number of servers n, the size of state space will be in the form, in the form of big O n squared. This means the number of data items will not affect the deployment complexity of the learning system, which is a desired feature. The action set is also a zero-one vector, which determines the operation destination of the write requests. Furthermore, as the read-write latency can be affected by time-variant factors, the measured read-write latency are directly used to calculate the reward. Considering the importance between read and write could be different in various application scenarios, the parameter omega is introduced to make the trade-off. Then we show how to reduce the size of state space caused by the number of deployed servers. For Q function approximation, a neural network is maintained in our system. Given the state information, that is the network conditions, user request patterns, and the right sources as input, and the reward of Q-learning as output, neural network can update the width of connections between layers of neurons. Through the training process for approximation, neural network learns the expected reward of data placement actions with a high efficiency and accuracy for quick decision. However, the conventional neural network are slow to train, 
also fast to make the decisions. The main objective of our design is to make instantaneous data placement decisions. We must ensure that the recurrent training process will not introduce extra delays to the data requests. So we have a parallel and synchronized design to be detailed later. Before that, I will introduce the architecture of the storage system and show how our design could be implemented on it. Typically, a storage system contains the storage servers, the data center networks, and a metadata server. The deployed metadata server, which is already in the existing system, is to manage the storage locations of data items. Each data item is assigned with a unique hashtag, and the metadata server maintains the mapping between the hashtag and the storage locations. When an application on storage server needs to retrieve a data item, it first asks the metadata server where the storage location is by using the hashtag. In this way, the storage locations of data items are flexible and can be changed. Then, the needed data items are read from the source storage server to the destination querying server. The metadata server also captures the service logs of the read-write requests through the deployed state monitoring module. The log contains the timestamp, TS, the operation type, read or write, the source and destination location of the operation, SRC and the DST, and the end-to-end -end elements of the latencies, LAT. Please note that the metadata server has already got all the information itself except the latency. Therefore, it's only necessary for the storage server to report the latencies to the metadata server. So the overhead is limited. According to our design, the state and the reward information can be derived from the store log files of the read-write requests. Let's move to how to reduce the impact of a training delay. The learning system is then decoupled into two asynchronous components that is the production system and the training system. The main purpose of the production system is to serve the request of query write, write locations through the deployed decision neural network. Given a state and the current width vector theta, we can calculate the output, which represents the expected reward of write the data items to the corresponding servers. The epsilon gradient method is applied here for the action selection. That is, with the probability epsilon, we select the action to maximize output value. Otherwise, a random action will be selected to search the unexplored solution space. When the storage locations of data items are updated, the system is transferred to a new state. The previous state, the action, the new state, and the observed reward constitute the tuple. The training system periodically capture, captures tuples in the plane memory, and they replay them with the mini batch stochastic gradient descent method to train an updated width vector theta plus. All tuples in the replay memory are partitioned into mini batches, and they're trained with the multiple iterations to converge faster. The iterations are termed as epochs. After a complete round of processing, the width vector of the training neural network, theta plus, is transferred to the decision neural network, theta. Next, we highlight the performance evaluation with more details can be found in the paper. Let's start by showing the evaluation setup. The real-world I.O. traces of an enterprise data center at the Microsoft Cambridge Research is used in the performance evaluation. The log file contains the host name, request type, read or write, and the timestamp for each request. We analyze the traces. The figure in the right, in the right showed the arrival rates of the read-write requests to all data items among the servers. However, the traces do not specify the detailed data item for each read-write request. So, we assume that the total number of data items is 10,000, and the request rates of data items follows a zip distribution among all servers. The well-known network emulator, Mininet, is used 
to emulate the data center networks. All 36 storage servers are in a presented fat tree network topology with three layers of switches. The linear capacity is set to one gigabit per second and the default data block size is set to 64 megabytes, just similar to the widely adopted Hadoop distributed file system. The client program is implemented on each storage server, which initiates the read-write requests according to the traces. In order to improve the efficiency of intensive data flows, the memory caching module is used at the end of data flows and cache the data items in RAM. The metadata server program is also implemented to handle the control flows, whose module includes the steady monitoring, the right destination decision, and neural network training. Two baselines, hash and com IP, are introduced for fair performance comparison. Hash can be intuitively understood as a random data placement for load balancing, which has been widely used in many distributed storage systems such as HDFS at Cassandra. COM IP places the data as close as possible to the IP address that most commonly access them under the constraints of storage capacity. Both hash and COM IP are heuristic solutions for data placement. We don't choose the classical optimization solutions as it's hard to obtain an accurate mathematical model for the entire dynamic system for fair performance comparison. Let's start by showing the results of the read optimized scenario with the right weight omega equals 0 0.2, as data items are more likely to be read in data center applications. This indicates a high priority of the read requests, while with a less concern to the right requests. The system runs for 3,000 seconds to reach a steady performance improvement ratio. Figure A shows the average reward per action of data placement. At the beginning, the read-write latencies decrease as the memory cache D module needs to be warmed up with data items. Therefore, the average reward with COM IP and hash tend to increase for the first hundred of seconds and then keep fairly stable then. In contrast, DataBot continuously learns better data placement decisions through trial and feedbacks over time with the increased average reward. For the last 1,000 seconds, DataBot achieves a much lower read latency compared to that achieved with COM IP and hash. The impact of the write weight is considered. When the write weight is increased from 0 to 1, the priority of the write request becomes higher and higher. Therefore, the average latency, write latency decreases by about 28%, <coughs> while the average read latency will increase by about 39%. The balance of the read write latency can be achieved when the write width is between 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. The write width is not considered in hash and com IP. So the average latencies keep fairly stable with the two schemes. Figure seven showed that DataBot achieves a better performance in most cases compared that achieved with hash and com IP. Furthermore, data replication has been widely used in the distributed storage system to improve the data reliability and the credibility. The impact of the replica number is investigated. When the number of replica is increased from one to seven, the network congestion due to the read requests can be eased. So the average read latency decreases for, with, the, for, with the three schemes simultaneously. However, the data item needs to be written into k different places. The write latency will unavoidably be increased we will use hierarchical writing in the follow-up work to reduce the latency. Figure eight, figure eight showed that DataBot achieves a better performance with the variation of replica numbers. Please note that the number of training epochs and the base size affect the training process of the neural network and the performance of data placement. As shown in figure nine, 
when the training epochs is increased from two to six, the accumulated reward tend to increase. As more round of training tend to decrease the difference between the expected reward and the output of neural networks. However, when the training epoch is further increased to eight, the accumulated reward decreases due to overfitting. The batch size determines how frequently the width vector theta is updated. Due to the same reason, when the batch size is set to 300, the highest reward can be achieved. Figure 9 and 10 suggest that a careful selection of the training parameters help to improve the performance of the learning system. And we will focus on auto-tuning in the follow-up work as well. Now, we can conclude this talk. We propose a Q-learning-based framework, DataBot, to automatically learn the optimal data placement policies to handle a dynamic system with many uncertainties. The neural network is, is used to estimate the near future latencies by training the weight vector combined with the Q-values, thus avoiding the huge complexity of the learning system and speeding up the solution, the convergence to the solution. Two, a synchronized component, that is the online decision making and offline training in parallel are integrated seamlessly to ensure that no extra overhead will be introduced to handle the data flows. Performance evaluation demonstrates the efficiency of this hybrid design. Thanks for your attention and giving me the chance to present here. I'm happy to hear your comments and answer your questions. Questions, one or two or three. I'll start here Just with this microphone. <laughs> so, go ahead. Thank you for great work. Um, I'm wondering how did you simulate the client requests, the read requests and write requests? Because it might be the case that the Q learning algorithm learned the pattern for which the requests are arriving. Yeah, you mean the how to obtain the, the read write requests, right? Yeah, that's a good question because we use the real world traces to emulate the network scenario. Let's go to the performance evaluation section. Yeah, we use the Microsoft Cambridge traces and the implemented client program initiates the read write requests according to the traces. So it's a real time request that derived from the traces. Niels. Thanks for the talk. Can you go to slide 22? Okay. So you're showing us on the right side some average values. I was wondering how about variations between your averages because the differences look not that large. And also, are you sure your simulations are in steady state because they're fluctuating a lot over time? Yeah, that's a good question. The fluctuation is caused by the dynamics of the environment, as I have been specified. According to the traces, when we analyze the traces, the user request patterns are not always stable. It shows some fluctuations. So for the data placement problem, the read-write latency may not achieve the, the best solution always. It, it may trace it traces the traces and uh, showed some fluctuation in the read-write latencies. So as can be seen in the figure, for some time, the COM IP even achieves better performance than the proposed game DataBot. But DataBot continuously to learn and the better data placement policies over time. So the average read-write latency can be reduced with the proposed scheme, which is basically a Q learning based solution. Good, so we take two questions from the corner also. <clears throat> Hi, I was wondering, did you compare the performance costs of the different algorithms, so your reinforcement learning to the different um, uh, heuristics that you compare to, yeah. like in terms of computational power? Yeah, we perform the, we compare the performance with the following two baselines, that is the hash and com IP. Hash and com IP can be are the heuristic solutions. We don't use the classic optimization solutions for performance comparison, as it's hard to design an accurate mathematical model for the latencies of the entire dynamic system. 
for fair performance comparison. So we use the, the well-known hash and com IP as the best lines. Uh, my question is, uh, could you please go to page, I think, 24? Okay. Uh, yeah, what's the meaning of the overfitting? Why overfitting impact the uh, experiment result? The other question is just a simple clarification question. In your work, you use the, uh, the accumulated reward. It is just a simply the accumulated reward that do the summation of all the rewards that uh, uh, you obtain during the whole experiments, not using the expected accumulated reward, right? Yeah. For the first question, the overfitting is a very key point for the training process because you know that typically one round of training will not achieve the best performance, right? And general, generally speaking, more round of training tend to decrease the difference between the expected reward and the output of neural networks. However, this is not always true. When the training round is unnecessarily large, the difference between the expected reward and the, the output will be enlarged. So the, 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 the impact caused by the unnecessarily training round is called the overfitting. And for the second question, we use the, directly use the accumulated reward because this is an online algorithm for the system. We don't have this kind of expected reward. We just use the observed reward and add them up and show the result. Typically, the higher the accumulated reward is, the better performance of the learning system will be. Good, so by that, we thank the third speaker. Um, <laughs> I strongly encourage further discussions and questions to all the, th the three speakers we had for the best paper candidates during lunch or later.